Is America going through a morality crisis? We're going to try to answer that in this video, specifically talking about this news article by a Michael Snyder via his The Economic Collapse blog with his title saying 40 facts that prove that America's moral collapse is spinning wildly out of control. Now, some of these facts are uh, actually not facts at all. A lot of them are opinion. This is coming from a right wing religious point of view. And we will be looking at some of these facts, debunking some of them, giving commentary to some of them and uh, giving credence to some of them, which I think are actually very important to bring up here. But Jason, uh, obviously everything here starts off Point number one and point number two starts off with abortion, Roe versus Wade. And one of the first thing it says here is, quote, America has killed more than 60 million children. When you kind of look at that source again, what it really states is that, uh, so what was it, 60 million, 69,971 abortions in America have taken place since 1973, which I do believe is a pretty much accurate statistic, but also one that's pretty big and glaring there that's a big number there jason to say the least yeah you know and i, I think the more disturbing part is uh the harvesting of organs to give it that extra incentive that they mention at the end of that and then if you look at point number two um a lot of this stuff is by the way coming from the pew research center we've uh, talked about them they do a lot of surveying uh, number two, according to Quinnipiac University poll from last year, 63% of all Americans want to keep Roe v. Wade in place. And I'd say that's very accurate. Um, yeah. There are many people out there that still are of the Christian faith or go to church or are of you know, religious beliefs that still support abortion, at least in some form. And, you know, we had a, a, quite the video yesterday where we kind of talked about how in our personal lives, we could never see making that decision. But at the same time, we would never want to uh, take away that that choice for somebody else in the in the proper you know three month or less uh, you know again we're not religious but we think that there should be some limitations at the same time uh, it's not our sword to fall on to end abortion. Well, you're not religious, but anyway, regardless, <laughs> another thing I wanted to bring up here when we're talking about surveys and polls and Pew studies, we have to understand here that they are not 100 percent accurate. There does uh, deserve to be some scrutiny and that they are somewhat accurate when it comes to polls. Uh, but let's keep going on this. We have number three. America is a global leader in sexual de depravity. If you doubt this, just check out what is going on in Cleveland at the end of this month. And uh, what's happening at the end of Cleveland is the LGBTQ conference. So again, a lot of opinion here uh, of how people see it, but there's more to that uh, later well, well, let's on. Let's say this, the Luke. Uh, the definition of sexual depravity is simply not really defined, right? Uh, one man's trash yeah, yeah. is another man's treasure. I love to throw that line out there. Um, yeah. But, you know, you'd be surprised how many uh, people are into whips and chains and other things behind closed doors. Is that sexually Non-binary furries. Yeah, again, you're not hurting anybody, and you're, you're consensually doing something with another adult human being. I have no problem with it. If you're not hurting another person... Do your thing. So again, that's a lot of opinion. Number five. Wait, wait, hold on, Jason. I talked to a lot of. Uh, I talked to uh, Tim Pool yesterday, and we were talking about furries and how it's weird that furries are. And and we kind of came to the conclusion. I'm speaking again just for myself, but from this larger conversation that I had with Tim, a lot of the furry people were usually children who were placed in front of a TV as babies, as as of course children, and we're watching furries as regular human beings, and that's what they seem as normal, and that's why they normalize it and feel so comfortable because it was such an integral part of their upbringing to see furry human beings, human beings dressed as animals, and that's why they kind of replicate it and create it and sexualize it in weird ways as well. So that's where the whole furry thing has come out of, which let's, I find let's stop fascinating. There. Let's stop there. Huh? Tim's a smart guy. He's not right about that. Sorry, Tim. I'm going to – well, let me tell you why he's wrong. Well, the kind of analysis that we're just looking at here yeah. of but, you know, the it's potential nonsense. here that I think is probable. No, it's not. Uh, if you <laughs> – let me, let me explain. Are you a furry? Are you admitting you're a furry? I know uh, no, furry. but I'm going to tell you what it's really born out of, Luke, and anybody can go look into this. Unfortunately, within that community, you know what you have a lot of? You know, a lot, lot of pedophiles. You find pedophiles there, okay? So – if you don't understand what a pedophile does, a pedophile also usually has sex with adults too. So what these people do, and not ever, I'm not saying that every furry is a pedophile, but 
you find like-minded sickos to dress up with and have sex with who also want to have sex with children. What are children attracted to? What are, what are they attracted to? Stuffed I mean, animals. I mean, that's one aspect. I, I, oh, is I that one aspect? True. I think both are true, and, and there could be some credence to this. But, again, there's people dressing up as dogs. Remember that clip we played of the person dressing up as a dog pretender? That's a little – That's I would say that's that's a little bit more deprived more than what I've usually been growing up with, what, what I've seen. And I think there is an argue, argument to make here that there is kind of more sexual depravity. Di uh, moving forward as time has gone on within the last few decades, at least in my opinion, because I remember it was controversial that you know Michael Jackson would like grab his crotch. That was the big controversy uh, back in the day. Now it's like, oh, a human being wants to be a dog. You better recognize me as a dog, or else, because <laughs> uh, uh, I identify as a dog. Uh, and literally, just uh, having that walking in the middle of the street, I think, is a lot different than what it was before. And I believe there is some kind of argument to be made here. On your point, I don't know. I'm not 100% convinced on both ways, but I think it's worth entertaining those in a social uh, uh, kind of factor here. Yeah, well, you don't have to agree with me as I scroll through dozens of reports of furry pedophile rings. So again, if you want to... It wouldn't like, surprise look, me. Hey, you're probably right. You're probably right. I haven't done the research. Uh, I, I I'm just saying that um, predators, sexual predators that are looking for children, uh, there's a reason there's jokes about ice cream trucks. Okay, yeah. and when you j dress like a giant stuffed animal, or you're a brony and you're into My Little Ponies, what are these little girls and little boys still watching? That type of stuff. I think that's really where it comes out of. And I'd say this to you, Luke. It's also different in the respect that these guys aren't trying to quote unquote identify, right? They're not supposedly identifying. What they're doing is they're. This is like a hobby. This is like cosplay to them. Where with the dog yeah. person. Let's, go to the discussion. Let's sidetrack this one because we're going out of uh, <laughs> way here. Number 33 on this list is that there are more than 850,000 registered sex offenders in the United States today. That's a number that uh, wouldn't surprise me. The link takes you to Wikipedia, but that's a lot of people there, Jason. Yeah, and also a low number because as I've discussed uh, earlier this week and last week when we found out that Jeffrey Epstein – um, only had to plea to having sex with a 16-year-old girl and not a 14-year-old girl. That means in 30-plus states, Jeffrey Epstein does not have to register as a sexual offender or predator. Think about that. Yeah. And that's, of states, course, elite politically connected privilege, which, uh, of course, the media doesn't want to talk about. But moving forward, number four is Americans are now more likely to die from one of those from a car accident. Uh, that's That wouldn't surprise me as well, since uh, you know it is a report by another news organization. Uh, and that's also terrifying to understand the full extent of it, because we hear about how devastated communities and cities are. Um, and, it, and it really wouldn't really surprise me that it's that high. Uh, what about you, Jason? No, that's a disturbing statistic, if true. And I'd say that the next statistic is even more disturbing, riding the coattails on that, where they're saying in the city of Baltimore, Maryland, approximately one out of every four, that's 25% of the babies born in Baltimore, are born as an opioid addict. I mean, again, I don't know that that's true, but let's well, say... That's by uh, and they're, they're usually uh, sometimes uh, you know, pretty, you know, pretty well on the money there, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, even one in 10 would frighten me. 10% would frighten me. 25% in a major city like that is uh, absolutely horrific. And then to uh, to go more on the opioids, overdosing on drugs has now become... This is number six, by the way. Yep. Overdose yeah. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, it's now become the leading cause of death for Americans under the age of 50. And with this crisis and the fact that now Purdue is settling lawsuits, it doesn't shock me. Uh, that this is the case, but it is very unnerving. Think about that. If you're under 50 years old, you know, car accidents and uh, other things were, you know, that's usually how you went. Disease, lower, lower numbers. But now, opioid addiction, damn. That's overdosing on opioids. That's scary. Yeah, let's keep going down. So let's at least try to do 20 of these and then 20 in the next video. Mm -hmm. But let's keep going down. Uh, we have number seven, McDonald's fee feeds approximately 70 million people a day globally. Pornhub gets more than 78 million visits a day. Uh, and of course, this is not just in the United States, which, uh, which number seven fails to mention. This is globally. So 78 million people uh, visit Pornhub uh, daily, uh, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of people. And that number is rising as, of course, 
pornography is addicting and is having very detrimental mental effects on not only young adolescents, but also young adults, which is also helping divide and conquer men and women against each other. Uh, and again, I'm just going to read these off. Feel free to cut me off if you want to make a point here. Well, I, I just want to make the point 78 million out of, you know, six to seven billion people, probably three billion adults that are on the Internet. And the other uh, the other thing is that this article is supposed to be about the moral depravity of the United States and America. And obviously this goes globally. I'm not here to be, you know, this isn't puritanism for me. Again, if you're an adult, you want to watch this stuff, you want to partake in this stuff, it's consenting, that's your thing. Uh, again, I think he's being a little deceptive here, and especially putting out like McDonald's. Listen, McDonald's feeding people globally also isn't a good thing. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Uh, number eight. But, you know, you, you got to make the argument, pornography is more available than ever, with more categories than ever, with more videos than ever, being free. Uh, for everyone to just literally go on to. And I think that also is having a very detrimental effect on the relationships men and women have uh, since, again, less people are getting married more than ever. But let's keep going on. You want to read off the next one, Jason? Yes, eight. The teen birth rate in the United States is higher than any other industrialized country in the world. Now, I'd really like to see what they're con uh, considering industrialized countries. Well, this, is, this is a study uh, that, that's, uh, that's listed by NCBI. Again, the links here will be, uh, I'll put the article in the description so you guys could fact check everything yourself. But the supposed study here is quoted as saying, why is the teen birth rate in the United States so high and why does it matter? I would question the legitimacy of that since uh, overall people are having less sex than ever. Uh, also, meaning probably because of pornography and other things. But regardless, let's just keep going on here. Yeah, because number nine, according to the CDC, approximately 110 million Americans have a sexually transmitted disease right now. Now, are we talking about uh, sexually transmitted infections and not diseases, something that could be cured? You know, are we talking about uh, something like gonorrhea, for instance, that you could take antibiotics and then all of a sudden you're okay? When they talk about sexually transmitted diseases, and this takes a uh, takes precedence in some of these other ones. You know, you look at HPV, and you can get HPV without full sexual contact. You know, you, know, you can get it from kissing or um, oral sex, other ways. And in many cases, it's harmless. Now, the media has hyped that up, that it's a precursor to certain types of cancer, including cervical cancer. But if you really look at that number, 110 million Americans, uh, what are the statistics for now? There's three to 400 million of us. So now you're telling me that, you know, and, and only so many of us are adults that one in two or three people has an STD. I don't know if it's that high. The CDC. Well, alleg well allegedly, a lot of people have, you know, herpes, which some people consider cold sores, another aspect of it. Yeah. And they don't have the symptoms for it and are not transmittable. So uh, it, it could be possible. But again, overall, I mean, I'm looking at statistics that say sex overall is going down. Marriage is going down unless people are being intimate with each other. There's a hookup culture that is worth talking about, but that's a whole nother issue to get into. Uh, let's just keep going on. Number 10 is kind of related. It says the CDC also tells us that there are approximately 20 million new sexual transmitted disease cases in the U.S. every single year. Uh, I mean, that's difficult because uh, other than, again, as we talked about HPV uh, and, you know, people, a lot of people having herpes, not even knowing for it, not even uh, knowing for it, and not even, you know, uh, having false results for it. Personally, I get uh, tested for uh, STDs myself. I have never had in my life an STD. Um, so I do believe there's something worth questioning here, and there's probably more details to unravel here, uh, but it, but uh, there's a lot, lot here to question. So we keep going for number 11? Yeah, the number of married couples with children in the U.S. just reached a 56-year low. That's not surprising. Uh, with all the propaganda out there, questioning whether you should ever have kids. Um, the fact that many yeah. people are now putting off marriage till 30 or 40, and then maybe or maybe not having children after that. I'd say that that is a real number, and it's an unfortunate yeah. one. It shows you the unraveling yeah. of the family structure. Yeah, Ber Burt Strike. They, they, there's literally propaganda. USA Today, I'm just walking around. I was at a Starbucks. I'm literally looking at the paper, front page. People are striking and not having babies because of climate change, and this is great. Celebrated, of course, by the BBC, state-run organizations. So much to get into uh, on that. Let's keep going, Jason. You know, this is a startling number as well, if true. But according to the United Nations Population Fund, 40% of all births in the United States now happen outside of marriage. Again, not shocking because there are long-term couples also deciding to have children, just not getting married. But then they look back at that to 1970, which... 
arguably, again, we're talking about almost 50 years ago now, that figure was sitting at just 10%. Now, you have to ask yourself, again, did people just get married? That happened yeah. a lot back then. If you got somebody knocked up in the 1970s, even the 1980s, especially in big Irish or Italian families, or Greek families, traditional families, they would push you to marry that person. Um, you know, I, you know, my mother was very young when she had me, and uh, obviously, uh, my parent. I actually was the uh, ring bearer yep. at my parents' wedding. So um, he knocked her up Let, again. Let's try to roll through it. these. I mean, the source on here is Faith Wire, so I do believe there might. Might be some bias here is coming from uh, number 13 at this point approximately one out of every three children in the United States lives at home without a father yeah that wouldn't surprise me um, at all uh, you know breakdown of the family unit has been very prevalent has been pushed has been promoted uh, and has had detrimental effects on our society uh, that thing is clear number 14 approximately one-fourth of the entire global prison population is in the United States again that number wouldn't shock me since the United States has more people imprisoned than any other country in the world. And, of course, a lot of those charges are for nonviolent drug offenses. And there's a huge industry that profits off putting people in prison. Yes, uh, I would argue uh, that, of course, it is a big industry. It is a money-making industry. And that's what it is mainly incentivized as. Um, and, and I would question the kind of bigger bear. You want to read off number 15? Yeah, by the time an American child reaches the age of 18, that child has seen approximately 40,000 murders on television. Now, I'd say that that now stretches to the web or Netflix and all that other stuff. But yeah, I mean, Ed, listen, we're, we're talking about daytime television at this point. Murder has absolutely been normalized in entertainment. I don't ne know necessarily if that's a bad or a good thing. I think it's how it's represented. You know, are, are we... Making the serial killer to be the hero, like in a series like Dexter, that's obviously something your kids should not be watching. Um, or are we making the police the hero when they kill the bad guy? Well, that could be detrimental too because you might want to question law enforcement. Um, I, I think that this is more like a hammer argument, but it does kind of show you that uh, you can't get away from uh, death and murder in pop culture these days. Yeah, and that effect of that, of course, has an effect on the psyche of, of young kids. I mean, you can't curse on television, but you could literally uh, rip someone's arm off, and that's fine. That's okay. That's mainly in you know, mainstream television. Number sixteen, according to a study conducted by the Mayo Clinic, nearly seventy percent of all Americans are on at least one prescription drug. As astonishing, twenty percent of all Americans are on at least five prescription drugs. Wouldn't surprise me, especially with the opioid epidemic, big pharma running out of hand, and also over prescriptions of antibiotics which we got into in a previous video so that doesn't surprise me yes the medical industry is running amok uh, let's finish this off strong here number 17 according to the cdc and uh, uh doctors in the united states write more than 250 million prescriptions for antidepressants each year uh that's a big number uh, that's more than uh, half of the population. Well, hold on. Let's stop there, Luke, because obviously they're talking about 250 million prescriptions, not 250 million prescriptions for 250 million yeah. people. There are a lot of this people. This is for 70s I'm seeing here. Yeah, well, well, again, there are a lot of people out there. They're just prescribing these things. In other words, they're throwing them at the wall. So one person might get a prescription for this drug. And then a month and a half later, that drug didn't do it. So let's prescribe them another. You know, let's prescribe them two more. Hey, maybe they need a Billify. You know, maybe maybe they need a drug on top of an antidepressant, an yeah. antidepressant for an well, antidepressant. When see commercials on television, if you have restless feet, get this drug. It, absolutely insanity. Uh, let's go over 18. Feel free to cut me off, Jason, anytime. Uh, over a half a million people are homeless in the United States right now, but more cities than ever are passing laws making it illegal to feed them. I don't know if more cities than ever, but there have been instances where people have been arrested for feeding the homeless people because of government regulation, permitting, licenses, control, which is absolutely insane and does show just uh, uh, police officers and law enforcement taking orders without questioning, questioning the morality of them. And that has happened. It has been documented. Um, cut me off again anytime, Jason. 19, one recent study found that the average American spends 86 hours a month on a cell phone. That number wouldn't surprise me. That number's going up. Our that lives low, that number's low. Little that that number here. is super low. When they talk about averages, listen, I'm promising you right now what they're doing is they're also factoring in the elderly that aren't on cell, that have the jitterbug, or they're at home, they still have a landline. 
let, let me explain what that number really says. That's about three hours a day on your little magic box, okay? Now I spend more than that. I would say that I, I'm probably I probably cut it off between one and a half and two, but I don't. If you look at my social media feeds, there isn't anything other than news. I don't take selfies. I don't have a story on Instagram because I don't have an Instagram. I don't have anything on Snapchat because I don't have a Snapchat. I've never done a story on Facebook. The average person does all those things and more every single friggin' day. I would say that the average millennial, if you will, is easily, easily on their phone a minimum of three hours a day and many times more around an average of five to six hours a day. And those are facts, folks. I mean, you go into any social situation, go into any restaurant, look at anybody who is under the age of 30 years old and they are attached to that goddamn thing. Yep, uh, and they never stop kind of using it, which kind of points out to the next thing. Number 20, a different study found that one-third of all American teenagers haven't read a single book in the past year. Again, this is based on a poll. Polls are somewhat true. Not always ultimately true, but somewhat true. And it wouldn't have me since, again, everyone just reads, uh, you know, usually headlines and, and tweets and everything has been shortened and attention span has been uh, extremely uh, shortened uh, to the point where you just have to make your points within the first 15 seconds of a YouTube video, which is, you know, principles which we have to abide by uh, even in our career. So those are 20 points uh, of facing moral uh, corruption in the United States. We're going to read off the next 20 in the next video, which probably will be released on this channel as well. So don't forget to stay tuned, subscribe. And then we'll finally answer the bigger question here. Is America facing a moral crisis? I think it is. But we'll debate that with Jason uh, later on. So stay tuned, subscribe for more here on wearechange.org.